this edition of FFS Pro Quick Tips, we're going to cover the replacement of a check valve in a 4-inch submersible turbine. Before we start, we want to ensure that our submersible is locked out and tagged out, that ball valves are closed on the discharge line, and that all confined space entry permitting and barricades are properly in place. So to start the process, we want to take and remove the cover of our manual pressure relief, like so. This is going to actually relieve all existing line pressure back to the tank so we can safely work and replace the check valve. So we remove our brass cover, we'll set that aside, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the manual pressure relief all the way up to the retaining ring that you can see inside the chamber there. And once we're up to our retaining ring, we're going to wait about five seconds or so, let all that existing pressure relieve into the tank. Once we're done, we're going to tighten it back down and replace our brass cap on top. Now we can enter the check valve chamber. We'll take our 9 16 wrench and we'll loosen our bolts. You want to keep a hand on top of the, of the cover here because we do have a spring above the check valve that will also, once we loosen enough, will actually start to raise the, uh, the chamber lid on us. Once we get the bolts loosened, we'll take and set those aside. Again, noticing we do keep some pressure on that because we do have a spring under that, under the check valve lid. See how that rises up once we get that last screw out. So we'll take our lid off, and we'll take that and lay it off to the side. We're then going to remove our check valve spring, keep that off to the side. Now we have a straight access into our check valve. Simply take a small pliers and just grab the, uh, the ID nut or the nut on the top of the check valve, give it a light little tug, and rise it right on out. And there's our check valve. So when we go to replace our check valve, we want to make sure we're replacing it with the proper check valve. The one I have here is a standard, and I, I know that because I have a date code and a silver nut. This was an R check valve used particularly for Vitaroo PLD. We would have a letter R stamped here and a black nut. And if we had a 65 PSI typically used in sleigh pumps, we would have a silver nut but a blue plate that would say 65 PSI. So today, we're going to replace our standard with another standard. We'll simply take again our pliers, put it on our nut, and slowly lower that back in. We want to make sure it goes in proper. You hear that slide in. So now we, we want to, then we want to make sure we're still getting it, it's moving up and down nice and freely, like so. And then it is sitting flat and sealing against the manifold. So now we're ready to replace, put our, our tools back in. We've got our check valve spring. We want to use the small circle at the end, and that goes right around our RD nut on the check valve. And then we're going to take our cover, but before we take our cover, we're going to replace the O-ring on the, on the lid here. So what we'll do is we'll remove this out, take that and discard it, and then with every check valve replacement, we send a brand new O-ring. So what we'll do before we put that on is we're going to put a little grease on that O-ring, and that'll allow us to let it stick in there as we try to put it back on. Because when you flip it upside and that O-ring is facing down, it likes to fall out sometimes. So we're going to put a little grease on it first. Set that aside. And then we're going to take our rag. We want to clean that trough and make sure there's no dirt or debris or anything left inside. Just give it a quick wipe around, make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to slide our O-ring back in that groove. We might need to put a little more grease on it once we get her in. Like so. There we go. And then we'll just do a little more, more grease around there. So now we're ready to slide our check valve cover back on. We want to make note that this tab will be on the outside, okay? So we don't want to flip it around. We want to make sure that's on the outside. We make sure we get our clamp through the spring. We'll slowly lower it back down. And we'll hold that guy down. And we'll put in our bolts, get them in there hand tight. And again, you want to keep some pressure on the lid because you do have that spring under there. Now once we get these hand tight, we're going to want to tighten them in an alternating pattern that will give us that equal compression on our O-ring. So we'll do one turn here, 
on here and just kind of alternate. Now we want to look, look around here to make sure that's sitting nice and flush with the manifold. That way we know we've got an equal compression on our O-ring and a proper sealing of the tire chamber. That will make sure we won't have any fuel or, or loss of product into the chamber. And then once we're done, we can go ahead and re-energize our turbine, check for normal operation, and check for line pressure at that point if we feel we need to. <laughs>